All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Clay Mosley, who is in Austin, Texas. How are you doing, Clay? Doing well. How are you? Yeah, great. And Clay is a father, speaker, entrepreneur, guest, podcaster, marketing conversion export, expert, and science fiction nerd. Uh, and what we're going to talk about today, you're the CIO of, or CEO rather, of Dripify, an online marketing training, coaching, and consulting platform um, based in Austin, Texas. And what we're going to talk about today is marketing from a 30,000 foot uh, view. So let's um, let's get straight into it, uh, Clay. Uh, you know, you've obviously been in marketing for for a long time now. You've got a lot mm -hmm. of experience. Maybe you just start off with how has how has marketing changed over the last number of years, and what has stayed the same, and maybe become even more important than ever. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a good question. So it's all relative, really, as far as like how many years you want to go back. I mean, obviously, if you go back to like two thousand five. Uh, 2004 ish, like that's when social media started coming on the, on, on the, uh, like in the world. Right. But like social mm -hmm. media has been around for a while. I mean, we have new social, social platforms that pop up like TikTok, for example, um, TikTok's still new. Um, and, but you know, if you think like, if you just want to go all the way back to like mad men times, like honestly, like the 1950s, it goes from like billboards, magazines, and it's like television, radio then when you hit the uh the tech boom right late 90s early 2000s that's when google was first uh kind of came on as um really really popular um and then fast forward to 2005 that's social media and then 2000 i think like 14 15 is when live streaming kind of started to mm -hmm. come into play um i don't know if you remember meerkat i think was the first live streaming oh, yeah. platform mm -hmm. yeah uh along with periscope and i think Twitter periscope, yeah. periscope yeah. Yeah, yeah um yeah and then and then now now we're getting into like the whole web 3.0 like the metaverse and mm -hmm. uh virtual reality like crypto nfts like that kind of stuff and so it's all like it's always evolving right but like to kind of go to your question of like what is what stayed the same in, in at least from a marketing perspective is how to get someone's attention right mm -hmm. um i know the attention span is like shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter but like what gets somebody's attention in my mind it all comes down to one word and it's emotion mm -hmm. so it's like how do you capture the emotion of the user or the person you're trying to get the, the attention of. Right. So it all mm -hmm. comes down to like headline. Can you capture the emotion? So that's yeah. like, no matter what era of marketing you, you came from or have experienced, that's always what it comes down to is like, did you capture the emotion? Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's what stays the same. I think that will never change. Yeah. And I think, and I think as part of that is, uh, you know, the experience that we've been through lately, I think has heightened our, our emotional and maybe our emotional antennas are more up than they have been maybe pre, maybe had been pre pandemic. Um, but I also think part of the, part of the problem a lot of uh, organizations face and marketers face now is, as you said, they're faced with so many different ways of approaching the audience that they can actually get too hung up on the medium and not so much on the message. Yeah, that's absolutely true. I mean, it's, it's, um, but you know, you know, what's so funny is like the message can be the same, but you got to reformat it, right? Mm -hmm. You got to reformat it. You got to, you got to repackage it according to what platform you're on. So you could say the same message on YouTube, for example, over a long form video that's like 12 minutes long um, versus like you shorten that down to a minute and put it on TikTok and make it more creative and artistic. Same message, but it's packaged quite differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so part of the issue is obviously, and and you obviously deal with this on a daily basis, is helping helping uh, people understand which platforms really suit them, where they should be, where their buyer is. 
their uh, their target customer are they in the same places that they were two years ago have they moved are they more you know dispersed i mean that that i think is is quite the challenge it is very challenging um so i would this is a debatable thing but i mm -hmm. would say they are on all the platforms generally speaking um so what i mean by that is i think there are certain times where they're on facebook certain times where they're reading a blog certain times when they're on youtube TikTok. like i think if you take me just for example me as an individual person like i get on all the platforms as a consumer mm -hmm. not as a marketer but as a consumer i get on all of them um what changes is my the psychology of why i'm on that platform so if I'm on Facebook, I'm keeping up with my friends and family. That's what I'm doing. Right. When I'm on Twitter, I'm reading the news. When I'm on YouTube, I'm learning how to do something. Uh, when I'm reading a blog, it might be a more in-depth article. Maybe it's more research-minded. Um, when I'm on TikTok, I'm endlessly wasting time in, in a mind. Right? <laughs> right. Um, so like I'm the same person. Mm -hmm. But, and I get on all the platforms, it's just like, why am I on there? That's, that's the difference. Yeah. And, and I think that's, uh, I think, I think that's a, that's a very, very good point. Um, but, and, but also I think the other challenge marketers face today is that there are so many different generations. Um, I mean, even in the workplace now, somebody told me there was five, I don't know how you get to five, but they swore by that. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem is that, you know, generationally, we consume things differently sometimes, or, you know, messages need to be pre um, presented differently to, to different um, audiences. And I, so I think things have become a little bit more complex from that point of view. Yeah, um, I mean, this all really depends on, you know, what business you're in. It's, sure. it's in what industry, of course. But yeah, I'd say there's, a, there's absolutely some truth to that. Um, like, uh, you know, like TikTok, for example, like that's super young. Um, however, what I will say is like the age of, well, we'll just talk about social media because the, like, that's mm -hmm. where a lot of the messages go. Um, the, the aging of social media platforms happens in an exponential way compared to the aging of a human being. Right. Right. So like Facebook itself, I don't know. I don't remember the exact year Facebook was, you know, kind of was born. Um, also, it depends on whether you whether you count like them at just at Harvard um, right. versus to the world. Um, so it's roughly 2004, 2005. Um, so they're, you know, they're roughly what? Um, 17. Is that right? 17 years old, 16 yeah. years old, something like that. But like when it first when it first came out, it was only for college students. Um, but if you take those college, I was one of those, right? I'm a, I, I graduated in 05 uh, with uh, at college. Um, so if you take me, Facebook's, let's just say 15 years old. Um, that would make me if if I if I age the exact same rate as a social platform, that would make me 32. I'm not 32. I'm I'm slightly mm -hmm. older. Um, however, if you take the average age of who's on Facebook right now, it's it's like it's much much older. Like, yeah, 50, yeah, like 85, I think. Yeah. Could, yeah. I see, I see 80 something year olds on there. So like, that's, that's, what's like difficult with marketing is, is you like, you go, you go and choose, you try to be on something, you know, the newest platform right now, like right now it's TikTok. I don't even know the average age of TikTok, but it's like super young. Mm -hmm. Um, but like in three years, that's the, the average, the average user is going to be like 40. You know what I mean? And so like, it's just like, that's why it's, this is what I always tell people. This is what I always tell my clients. I'm like, because they, they don't want to get on the newest thing because mm -hmm. they're like, well, it might be like not relevant in three years. Right. right. But I'm like, but it's relevant right now, right now, you know? So let's capitalize on it. Um, yeah. So I, yeah. You know, there's, there's some truth to what you said, like, you got to change up the message and this is this all comes back to like repackaging your message mm -hmm. um because like a, an older person when i say older I'm, i mean like 60 or above right um or 65 and above i really uh like 
the way they consume content is going to be so much different than like a 22 year old, you know, mm -hmm. even versus a 40 year old. Um, it's like 22 year olds. They want to see things like that are super short form videos, you know, like 10 seconds, 15 seconds, um, 40 year old might consume content. I think, I think, uh, like people that are forties ish, I still think they like to consume photos, you know, cause like that's, that's when, you know, Instagram, when Instagram was born, mm -hmm. it was, it was a 100% photo app. And that's what, that's what we're, we're used to, you know? Um, uh, but like, it's going to be quite different across ages, you know, but yeah. you can still get yeah. the same message across. You just got to repackage it. Mm -hmm. So um, when talking about um, messaging, um, how has, uh, have you seen evolution in, in message? Cause you did mention earlier about the attention span thing. Um, what's it? Our attention span is less than a goldfish now. I don't yeah. know how they measured. I don't quite know how do you do an IQ test. <laughs> Who the hell knows how? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how do you know that? <laughs> exactly. But I could believe that we've less of an attention span. I think we've, uh, probably crossed over into de-evolution at this stage where we're going backwards <laughs> and we're using hieroglyphics to communicate within text messages. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so how, uh, talk about the challenge of, of messaging in a world that which such short attention spans. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing that's, that's, that changes is, is the fact that it's just lots and lots of video content. Like that's mm -hmm. just, you know, think about that. Like 20 years ago, the only video content that we could consume was on TV or in a movie theater. Right. You know what I mean? Like that was the literally the only video content we can consume. Right. Uh, I mean, you could do it on a computer, um, but I'm going to count that. Like it's on a, on a screen, right. Yeah. On a, on a monitor. It's not like a device on our phone. So that is that's the challenging part, right? That's the, that's how it's evolved. That's why you see all these companies, like they, they're now focusing on video only. Everything's going video only, like centric. Um, so that's, that's the difference. And then even, even then, even with video, just take the video category, even that by itself has evolved. It's, it's evolved in the fact that now it's getting shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter, like the, the time durations, as far as how, how short it needs to be in order to keep people's attention, you know, um, it's so it's, it's, um, there, there's that. And then also like the creativity. Mm -hmm. So you, you see things like, like on TikTok, Instagram reels. Um, now you can be way, way, way more creative. Uh, this really, this really started with like Snapchat. Yeah. Um, Snapchat, you can like draw on it. You can insert, you know, GIFs or GIFs, whatever type of person you are, how you pronounce that. Um, and so like, that's where it really all started is like, you can draw things, you can like do animations and things like that. So like that's now it's, it's gotten to the point where it's no longer just video content, but it's video content that users are, are creating and being really creative with it. Right. You yeah. can make it your own unique thing. You can even take somebody else's video and on top of that, do your own creative thing. So that that's yeah. where I think it's how it's evolved. I mean, the things that I think haven't changed, again, it's emotion, right? How do you capture the emotion? It, like that's the ultimate goal. Now, how you capture the emotion, the emotion has changed, but that the goal has not changed, right? Emotion. Right. And then... I still think, and it's, and it's a, it is a, uh, what do you call it? Um, the skill set of copywriting right? is like, dude, that is so undervalued and copywriting goes way like it's ancient. It's one of those ancient skills that I think will never go away. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, you have these like AI uh, copywriters, though. No, uh, I I am convinced that's still not going to be as good no, as no. someone who's like a human being who, yeah. who does copy. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with you, and I think I I think somebody who is never 
tried to, you know, never been given something where you have to get down to like one sentence or something and you have all of these ideas and you have to go through that whole iterative process of paring down and paring, don't realize um, quite how difficult, how difficult that is. And as you said, it's becoming more of a premium skill given the short form content. And um, interestingly, I mean, as you know, I mean, YouTube have now brought in shorts as well. Sure. So it's like everybody is... Uh, every, it's like everybody is all, almost standardized now on these sh- very, very, very quick, short things, and they're all copying each other. Um, so, yeah, so the challenge now becomes how to deliver messages very, very succinctly, but as you say, very creatively too. Yeah. And, you know, I'm kind of seeing this trend. So, I test a lot of things. I test a lot. I test so much, so, so many things. Um, but I'm seeing this trend where you know how like snail mail like through the u.s post office like it just kind of went away when digital came about like email came about and then now it's like it's kind of came back around where you actually something that's not junk mail Mm -hmm. it's very very pleasant to get right like a handwritten note or a letter or something i kind of think that's happening with like with email and text messaging um, I think people are, at least, at least this is true for the affluent, like people who, who have plenty of cash flow. Um, th- I'm seeing this trend where that is the only uh, type of like marketing consumption that they they do. It's email. It goes back to email and text messaging. Um, they totally skip social media, which is, mm-hmm. which is interesting. But the rest of the population, the rest of the world, uh, like they're eating up social media for sure. Yeah, um, I- interesting that one on on text messaging and and marketing using text messaging because I mean that's obviously becoming more and more prevalent now. Um, it's still I know there's some regulations and stuff around, but I mean it's still pretty much wild westy uh, type environment. Where where do you see that going? Yeah, I think it's going to. I think it's going to trend up. Um, only, only, um, with, in my opinion, within, well, I guess it really depends on what type of text message, what kind of SMS marketing you're talking about, because like, there's the type that's just like, Hey, let me spam the crap out of you. Mm -hmm. Right. But there's also the type of like, okay, we have a community kind of thing. Right. So the spamming, that's going (laughs) to. That's gonna that's gonna that's gonna creep up again, um, just because it, your your cell phone number is just it, you can't hide it, um, and I think more spam more companies are gonna keep spamming, uh, but like what I'm talking about as far as com- what I call community texting, mm-hmm. I think that's gonna increase among again the affluent. I don't think it's gonna increase among like the middle class um, or even the lower class. Like that's I don't think it's gonna be a thing. Um, I think in the upper class, I think that is going to be a thing. Uh, that's the trend that I'm seeing. That's the, that's and very, very, I'm seeing quite a substantial increase with that and people love it. People love it. Um, I, you know, my community, I, I text them. I used to text them once a week and I almost, I, I, I was at the point where I was like, man, I don't know, this might be too frequent, right? Like nobody wants mm-hmm. to get. Nobody wants to get messages from a from a company, right? Like weekly, um, right? But the, the you know the text messages I send are not they're not spammy, they're not salesy, they're they're very value driven texts. And and then I sent out a little survey to them. I said, hey, I'm thinking about doing this once or increasing from once a week down to either twice a month, so every other week, or or twice a week. So mm-hmm. I was gonna go one or the other, right? Go more frequent or less frequent. And I said, reply back with with uh, what you prefer. Ninety five percent of them said, let's increase it to twice a week. Yeah. Interesting. And that's what I did. And the feedback has been awesome. So and but my audience is mostly the affluent, you know, the, the upper mm-hmm. upper class people. So, yeah. But it's a good, it's another good uh, reminder of, I guess, the power of finding a community and being able to develop and nurture communities. And it is one of the hardest things to do. I mean, there's lots of people try to develop communities and, and, you know, they start off with a bang and then fade very quickly. 
But I think that's some that's not something that's going to go away in terms of of the importance of trying to develop communities. That will never go away. Um, in fact, I think people are going to be more desperate for community, um, especially now. You know, mm -hmm. post uh, I call it post pandemic. Yeah. Uh, some people will say we're still in it, but we're you know. So, yeah. Depends some people will mood. always be in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Um, I think people are kind of tired of 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 being you know locked down but the the issue with 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 covid happening is that all these companies and all these businesses realize that they can do business virtually mm -hmm. they don't need a campus they don't need a brick and mortar office or whatever um and uh they're that's what they've stayed there even though they can go back they can go back to the way it was and say hey everybody come on let's go back into the office um but they they haven't. They realize that they don't need they don't they can still operate business without all the real estate costs. And so I think people in general and just the general public as consumers, because they're tired of the lockdown and whatnot, I think they're 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 just like they're itching for community. And so I think it's gonna be it's gonna be easier and more difficult to create community at the same time. I think it's gonna be easier because they are itching for community. I think it is going to be more difficult because more people are going to try to create community, which means you got more competition. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I think that's a great point, actually, about the fact that the more virtual organizations go, there will be that com community void, if you like, you know, that, that uh, people can definitely step into and, and fill. Um, listen, uh, this has been fantastic, uh, Clay. All of Clay's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and Dripify. Yeah, so Dripify, uh, so just context about me. I, <laughs> I'm i kind of the anti-marketing agency person. Um, agencies typically don't like me because I I grew and uh, and sold two different marketing agencies in the last two, last eight years. So Dripify, I, I created Dripify as like, I now help people create a, a complete internal marketing system that they can run themselves because, mm -hmm. and, and I'm specifically talking about small businesses here, okay? Sure. I'm not talking about big corporate brands um, because I think that's just like, it's so much more efficient to do that. And so that's what I help people do, whether it's through coaching or through, through do it yourself or do it done for you. Um, that's what I do, and um, I have a lot, a lot of fun doing it. And it's, it, I'm helping more people with their marketing this way. Great, uh, that's fantastic. Like I said, uh, go please go check out Clay and check out uh, Dripify, uh, and uh, you know, lots of great information today. Thank you so much for sharing, and thank you all for watching and listening. I'll see you all again soon. Thanks. See ya.